The Fujifilm 16mm 1.4 is one of, arguably, Fujifilm's best lenses. Some may argue that it is the best lens that they make. The lens is ridiculously sharp, it's super well built, it's like a tank, <laughs> and it has an amazing minimum focus distance, which is actually my favorite way to shoot this lens. I made a video on that, you should check it out. But this video is for those of you like me, I just picked up the lens without ever trying it from all the positive reviews, justified positive reviews, by the way, all the great image samples, and that 1.4 just looked amazing. All right, but first, before you hit the buy it now button, because it is an amazing lens, you should be aware of a couple of things that I found, and I'll let you know from using it. All right, the first one really isn't, oh, excuse me. Okay, the first reason is really no big deal. It's more how I prefer to shoot the Fujifilm cameras, and it has to do with this clutch manual to autofocus thingy that the lens has. And the reason for that is I always have autofocus available to me in two ways. If I'm using the Fuji X-T20, I have touch focus available, even if it's on manual focus. And also I use the back button focus. So that's always on, even though this is on manual focus. However, that works great on lenses like this 35 millimeter uh, F2 or my kit lens but the 16 millimeter has this clutch focus device. And the way it works is when you wanna manually focus, you click it and now it's a uh, manual focus is available. And as soon as you click it this way, manual focus is not available anymore. But I found that if I have it on manual focus with the clutch, that back button focus doesn't work anymore and touch focus doesn't work anymore. So it's just that, you know, since it's a little different of a lens, I'll be like, what, what's going on, what's going on? Oh, and then hit the clutch back on so that I can autofocus with the back button. So why don't I just leave the clutch on all the time and not keep it in manual? It's because I like to use manual focus as well. I like both of them to be turned on. So just know with this lens that that may be a little strange if you shoot like I do. The second thing you should really think about with this lens is how big it is. Now, that's no big deal. It's still smaller than DSLR lenses, of course, but it may end up sitting on your shelf collecting dust if really your goal was to keep it as small as possible. So it does take a little bit away from the benefit of why I got into the Fujifilm system. So I could be like, super tiny, super small. You know what? This camera's too big. Super small, super tiny, Fuji X-T20, so you could throw in a pocket. So as soon as you introduce the 16 millimeter, and it, wow, it's big, it's big. On my Fuji X-T20, it's a little large. So just keep in mind that you may be canceling out the benefit of the Fujifilm system, which is small sized kit. Now I get comments from people that say this lens lives on their camera 100% of the time. If this is your only kit and you walk around with, you're used to its size, totally fine. But just keep in mind if you're trying to keep things small and light for travel, even though the whole system is pretty much small and light and wonderful anyway, it's on the bulkier side. Check out the 35, by the way. 35 millimeter. You know, it, it just on the X-T20 or the smaller cameras, X-T30 coming soon. Uh, it's gonna balance out really nice. And the last one is kind of a big one you should be aware of, and I thought I'd be fine with it, but I'm struggling. No fault of the lens at all. The 16 millimeter crop sensor equivalent is 24 millimeters. This focal length is, how do I say this nicely? Awkward. Hey, what Kanye, what's going on? Oh, hey, man. Hey, what Kanye, up? what's going on? Now, this video is not for those of you rocking the 24 millimeter, that that's your style and that's what you do and you love 24 millimeters and people love your photographs and you're happy, go away. This is for people who just pick it up like me and are realizing that if I'm walking out the door, this is not the lens I'm grabbing. I know that's terrible to say because it's so damn good. But the reality of it all is if I only had one lens, let's say I'm going to Sydney, Australia for the first time or Hong Kong or London, or uh, what are some other cities? If I was traveling somewhere new, I would be hesitant day one to just have this as, be, as my lens. Now don't get me wrong, on day two or three of a vacation in a city, I would love to walk around with this lens and get what I get. Or just waking up early before the family does and walking around just for me, playing with the 16 millimeter 1.4 like that, 
makes me happy. The 24 millimeter focal length is not wide enough to take everything in, which is why if someone gave me the choice between the 10 to 24 millimeter to travel around a city for the first day or the 16 millimeter, as good as this lens is, I would feel better myself the way I shoot with the 10 to 24. And again, that's not a knock on the 16, it's more a knock on me, which hurts. This lens is easy to shoot with. Shooting stuff that's super wide at 10 millimeter makes you a fantastic photographer automatically. The tough thing about the 24 is it's not always as wide as you want for architecture, especially if you're indoors. It's a little awkward for portraits, uh, unless you're doing an environmental portrait with a person and a scene, but just the person is a little awkward because of the distortion if you're close to them. So I find that I'm struggling with this lens to get like good results. So this focal length hang up is actually a benefit because it's gonna force me and force you if you have the lens to try to work it, to actually really try to get images. And I think that's where the benefit, I think that's where the benefit is with this lens. It actually forces you to create as opposed to the, man, the 56 millimeter, you could just point this out of your ear and get a beautiful image with the bokeh and the compression. So the 56 millimeter, if, if you want amazing pictures right out of the box and these two cost the same, 56 millimeter, easy. But I'm excited, I'm excited about trying to really make good photographs with the hardest focal length I've ever had to deal with. The weird and strange in between wide and a normal 35 millimeter, but I'm excited. All right, I'll see you guys next time.